I wish to welcome our first guest speaker, the Honourable Jenny Macklin. We are so pleased that she can actually be here today, so thank you, thank you. Give it up for Jenny. Happy birthday to the NDIS. It is uh, such a wonderful uh, occasion to be here with all of you to celebrate uh, this extraordinary achievement. It really is worth marking. So to all of you who've done so much to make today a success, to all of you who've done so much over the last five years to make the NDIS a success, thank you so much. Now, on this fifth birthday, it is important for us to take a moment to remember, <coughs> as well as celebrate, the point of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Of course, the idea for uh, a disability and care scheme being delivered via an insurance approach rather than a charity or a welfare approach was first put forward many, many years ago by the Whitlam government. And there's a very famous quote uh, from Gough Whitlam. I wish I could sound like him, but I can't. <laughs> Just imagine him saying this. Australians should not have to live in doubt or anxiety, lest injury or sickness reduce them to poverty. We want to reduce hardships imposed by one of the great factors for inequality in society, inequality of luck. Legislation for a disability insurance scheme was before the parliament when the government was removed back in 1975. It never saw the light of day. And people with disability and their families had to wait another 40 years for a different government to take up the fight. In 2008, around half of all the people, half of all the people in Australia with severe and permanent disability were getting little or no support. Half. 10 years ago, back in 2008, when I was the minister in the Rudd Labor government, Brian Howe and Bruce Bonnie Haney came to see me and Bill Shorten at that point was my parliamentary secretary, he's moved on a bit. <laughs> they uh, proposed that we look at an insurance approach for funding disability care and support. That was 10 years ago. It's taken 10 years to get to the point we're at today. 10 years to implement this very, very big reform. Now running parallel to this, people with disability, their families, carers, service providers were really getting organised. You'd remember the creation of the alliance between people with disability and uh, other activists. They came together with carer groups and with service providers. And this was a really significant decision as many of these groups had had very, very different perspectives about how people with disability should be supported. Then, of course, the absolutely brilliant campaign uh, of Every Australian Counts was launched in 2011. And Every Australian Counts was entirely separate from any government uh, and, of course, had very, very savvy people uh, running the campaign for a totally new approach to the way in which care and support should be delivered for people with disability. And of course, every Australian does count. That's why I'm so pleased to be wearing the T-shirt here today. The very first rally for Every Australian Counts was actually held here in Geelong in 2011. So congratulations to all of you for that. By August 2011, uh, Bill and I had convinced uh, Prime Minister Gillard that we needed to support the recommendations of the Productivity Commission inquiry. They showed, and this, is, this too is really important, especially when we hear the critique from some people, no, nobody in this room, but from some people that we can't afford the National Disability Insurance Scheme. What the Productivity Commission showed is what you all know. First of all, that the old system was completely broken, but they also showed that a crisis-driven approach, one that we had for generations before 2013, 
a crisis-driven scheme would actually be more expensive than an insurance-driven uh, approach. <coughs> By the end of 2012, Julia Gillard uh, came into the Parliament and introduced the legislation to create the National Disability Insurance Scheme. And when it went through the Parliament uh, in uh, early 2013, I have to say it was the most extraordinary day to have every single member of, of the Parliament, every single member, supporting the establishment of this groundbreaking reform. <laughs> now, it is true that uh, in recent months we have seen that excitement and enthusiasm that you can see on our faces uh, in these pictures, uh, it has been replaced by frustration and in, in many cases disappointment. Now like you, I get lots and lots of emails uh, and phone calls from people uh, who say they feel let down because of their day-to-day -day experiences. The thing I think we've got to remember is this is an enormous change. It really is an enormous change away from the charity-driven approach of the last 100 years, away from block funding, towards a system that gives people with disability the right to say what they want to do with their lives. There are 40,000 people already who have come into the National Disability Insurance Scheme who previously received no support from any Commonwealth or State Government uh, in the past. 40,000 people whose lives are now being changed. For some people it has become a bureaucratic nightmare, not the people-centred organisation that all of us uh, so much want to see. It is absolutely essential that the culture of the organisation is one that continues to be focused on individuals. Otherwise, we're going to see the undermining of the trust that so many people have. Let's just make sure that people can see their plans, and make sure that things are right before they get uh, put in place. Uh, that's, that was the number one issue raised uh, in the Every Australian Council <coughs> survey on how to, how to fix the scheme. So let's just get that fixed. Make sure that people... It doesn't sound that difficult, no, does it? Not. We can't have people's uh, emails and phone calls not being uh, answered. These are not big or complex problems to be fixed. As the Productivity Commission uh, report into the progress of the NDIS uh, observed just last year, many of the problems are being created by a lack of staff and inadequate training. So one of the things you would hear me go on about all the time, the staffing cap on the National Disability Insurance Scheme must be lifted and lifted immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure that people's uh, plans get done on time, that they get done accurately the first time, reduce the absolute flood of decision reviews uh, that are causing so much uh, difficulty. We all know the IT system has been the source of great frustration. This too, a practical thing that can just be fixed and fixed urgently. There are serious problems with the prices of many items uh, in the scheme. Many, many providers approach me with serious concerns about whether or not they're going to be able to continue. We need a viable disability sector with high quality staff and that is only going to come about if we get the prices right. That even though the National Disability Insurance Scheme is going to be the source of a big increase in the number of jobs, and that's a great thing, we need to make sure that all of the people who get these jobs have decent working conditions, decent pay, uh, because people with disability want people with quality, they deserve people with quality, and of course, the workers themselves need those decent pay and conditions. 
Uh, just one final issue that I want to uh, emphasise, something I have to say I've been uh, going on about for a very long time and I'm sorry to say I still have to go on about it, and that is housing. It is an enormous frustration for so many people that we are just not getting enough houses built, not enough houses built. People with disability will not be able to choose the lives the lives that they want to live if they can't get the housing right. So let's get this right. Uh, we just can't uh, have any more delays. I think all of these practical things, if fixed, would enable us to focus on making sure that we keep our minds firmly focused on what it is that we want from the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Keep putting people with disability right at the heart of this extraordinary reform. Make sure that the National Disability Insurance Scheme delivers on its promise to improve the lives of people with disability. I know that that's what you want, it's certainly what I want, and one thing's for sure, you as advocates will continue to have the passion and the drive to make sure that the National Disability Insurance Scheme delivers everything we ever hope for it. Thank you.